Drake and Rihanna on the morning show. Hello, good morning. It's 8.16. It's Thursday. It's nearly the weekend. And this morning on the show, we're delighted to have a special guest. Uh, the guy's name is Elliot Lester, and he is a director. And we, he joins us live from Hollywood to talk about his new movie, Aftermath, with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Good morning, Elliot. <laughs> Good morning. Good, good evening. morning, or good evening, say. where you are. How are you this? Oh, this. Well, this, for us, it's morning. How, it's evening over I'm, there. <laughs> it's yeah. I'm good. Yes. Yes. It's great. Yeah. How is uh, Los Angeles this fine evening? Dark. <laughs> <laughs> In a word, absolutely. Well, let's just dive straight into it, Elliot. Um, you are the director of this brand new movie called Aftermath. I am. So yes, why don't I you am. tell us a little bit about the film itself? It's actually based on a true story about this terrible mid-air collision that happened actually in Russia. Um, and uh, the events were terrible. I mean, uh, in the middle of, the, you know, a, 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 this terrible plane, these two planes collide, and then a man loses his family and amongst all these other people that died. And he wants to understand why this happened, and he blames the air traffic controller who was in charge of the planes that night, and he seeks him out, and he murders him. And those wow. were the actual... Those are the true events. Those are the true events. Uh, those are the true events. That, uh, and that, before we get to it anymore, I mean, that's a, that's a very bizarre story. Uh, Isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to understand finding someone who's likable in that. You know what I mean? You can kind of understand. That must have been a, a weird thing for you to be drawn to it. Well, you know, you say you say that, but the, you know, we, the script is quite different from the actual real story. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, the, the, we, we reimagined it and, and it, it takes place in America. And um, actually, you know, it's more about forgiveness other than anything else. Okay. I think the real events that took place are quite different. I mean, a far, um, and to your point, far more harrowing. Yeah. yeah, ours is a bit more. Ours is a bit more lyrical and, and poetic. Okay. And Arnold Arnold delivers a, a very unique performance. It's not the Arnold Schwarzenegger that you 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 know that you come to know and love. Well, I was going to say that just looking at the trailer and watching the trailer, yeah, you already see a very different side to him, and in a way, it's 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 very. <laughs> It's it's a it's a softer side and it's uh, it, it sort of pulls at your heartstrings a little bit. Um, and I, I I have to ask. I mean, was Arnold Schwarzenegger? Uh, you know, like did you just know? For- like did you just know he was the man for the job? I you know he actually was on the movie before I came onto it. Oh okay. right. And I remember I had the exact same thought. Can this man who's been so many incredible action figures? you know, be, you know, a soft, sensitive, emotional character. And he was brilliant. He, you know, there was no ego. He was like, I'm going to, he's like, you know, I'm going to put as much into this role as I did into Conan or into the Terminator. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he's a very, very intelligent man. Was it? He, he was. Go on, sorry. <laughs> he's remarkable to work with. I mean, yeah. he's absolutely remarkable. When, how do you get that kind of emotion from Arnold Schwarzenegger? Because you don't, you don't, as we were saying, you don't think of him being that kind of emotional man. Is it something that he wanted to do? Is this something like for you know, a changing career to show a different side of himself? I think if you know anything about Arnold, you know that he loves humans and he loves mm-hmm. people, and he has a whole other side to him. He does an enormous amount of charity work cares about the environment. So there's no lack of compassion. Yeah, right. I think that he for so long did one role and did it so well that, you know, at 70 years of age, wow. he could take a risk. No. Yeah. Hang on a sec. What? I, I had no idea, first of all, that he was 70 because, boy, he looks good for 70. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. You know, 70. You, know, <laughs> you know, I saw him, I saw him on Monday for breakfast and 8 a.m. in the morning, he just finished his workout, <laughs> rides his bike. Wow. I mean, nothing's changed for that guy. He's very disciplined like that. But yes, look, he, he wants to play more serious roles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. What, what is it like making a movie on this kind of scale? Because it looks, I mean, if, if anyone's seen it already, because it came out in Cairo, uh, it's in cinemas right. now, and it was out uh, last right. weekend. If anyone's seen it, you'll know this is a big movie. I mean, what was it like making a movie for you on this kind of scale? Um, you know, I've done movies on this kind of scale before. Mm-hmm. What was what was what was different was working with a icon. Yeah. I've worked with a lot of 
great actors, but I'd never worked with anyone who had, you know, who's amassed eight billion dollars in, you know, ticket sales. And right. Who's been in our, you know, and he's been in everybody's mind for, you know, thirty years. I mean, I grew up watching Arnold Schwarzenegger movies. You know, Red Heat, Commando, mm. Conan, Terminator. Total Recall. Total Recall. Is a Total good one. Recall. Great movie. Yeah. You know. The list goes on, doesn't it? I mean, you think of him, you don't think of him in a sensitive role. But, but uh, yeah, he was thrilling. I mean, like, that was the thing that was so awe-inspiring. The size of the, uh, the size of the, of the, of the megastar. Well, right. I mean, you must have been a little bit starstruck if you grew up watching him. What's it like then, like, directing one of the, you know, those icons, like you said, that you grew up watching? Well, you know, that's a, that's a great question. That, that's interesting because with 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 Arnold, when we we sat down and we first met, I said, "Look, you've been Terminator and Commando, go, but when you show up on set, I need you to be the actor and let mm-hmm. me be the director. Otherwise, this is never going to work." And he was very very gracious, and he said, "Absolutely, of course, I want to I want to do the best possible work." Um, and you know it's very difficult. Of course, I'm a little bit starstruck because of who he is, but mm-hmm. you can't let the you can't let the actor see see that. Otherwise, they lose. It becomes awkward. Of yeah, course, yeah. yeah. I'm, a, I'm a fan. I'm just <laughs> <not that>. <laughs> 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 it's a gushing that, away. Right, can you sign? Can you sign this? Or, can you <laughs> sign this poster yeah. for me? There was none of that. That probably wouldn't work very well, would it? <laughs> Uh, uh, no, <laughs> you've worked with, as you say. You've worked with other big actors. I mean, another big movie of yours uh, was Blitz with uh, Jason Statham, uh, and there's yeah. another actor who is known for these big, strongman action roles. Uh, 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 is that like a theme of your work? Is that something that you like? No, to work- not a, not not at all. I mean, the movie that I think I'm best known for is Nightingale, which got the Golden Globe nomination oh, last course. year. Yes, it was produced by Brad Pitt and. Um, Starred the very talented David Yellow, who yeah, what a great actor, just incredible. Um, I mean, look, I like a good story. I try to change things up, but mm-hmm. no, I I, lo- I loved working with Jason. That was a very that's a very very physical actor who loves to do the stunts, loves fighting. He's got a big movie opening this week as well, hasn't he? He's got Fast and Furious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that, that little picture. Yeah, that small franchise. Don't, <laughs> that's right. Elliot, they, don't, they, you know, don't yeah. plug that. It's up against your movie at the cinema. <laughs> don't, don't plug that I film. Mean, <laughs> hey, I've got a legend. <laughs> they're, they're, just, they're just about... What, how many movies is it? It's eight. It's number eight, isn't it? Yeah, it is, it's the yeah, eighth fast one. Fast eight, yeah. yeah. Would that's that be... Would you do oh, nine? Wow. Could you do nine? Uh, I don't think I want to do things that go into head are heading into double digits. <laughs> I don't know if I'd be the right guy for that. I'll certainly take the paycheck. Yeah, yeah. All right, fair, fair enough. Just for the cash. <laughs> well, the question is, of course. I mean, you, you've said you've you've done all sorts of you know these movies with these awesome actors, mm-hmm. fantastic actors. What's next for you then? I mean, do you have anything on the cards? I do. Yeah, I'm working with Matt Damon on a project called First, okay. which is all about the about the water crisis. Uh, that's being made by HBO Film. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, we're planning on hopefully she's met in India and Brazil and California. Wow. And uh, that's that's something that's very close. Because, I mean, obviously right now there's a worldwide water crisis that, you know, it's reported daily on. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, we're, I'm, I'm making that, that's, hopefully. That's fantastic. Well, when can we expect to see that then? Before we run out of water. <laughs> okay, that's a good, good answer. Fingers, <laughs> fingers crossed. Fingers crossed for that. Uh, you know, I, you're dealing with man, you're dealing with big stars, so it depends on their schedule and their true. dates. And their, I mean, it, you know. what is the life of a director like for you, then, Elliot? Um, uh, on a on a on a day to day basis, are you looking for projects, trying to get projects started? Do you have different projects w- running at the same time? You always have a bag of you always have a bag of things that you want to get made, mm-hmm. and at any and any one stage you're like writing something, you're in development on something where you're, you know, it's at the script stage or you're in post on a project. But there's you're always. I mean, I think you're kind of like like a, a bloodhound, kind of <laughs> looking for your next kind of piece of meat or whatever. Yeah, um, yeah, constant meat. I mean, like when I'm not on set, I'm meeting. I'm in meetings, or I'm meeting other actors, or I'm setting up projects, or I'm meeting at the studios, or 
raising my 10 year old son but there's always some i mean tonight you know tonight i just come from a shoot where i've been you know i've been directing these guys who go and rescue kidnap kids wow you know and i'm, I'm and that's prepping for another project so there's always there's always things to do because there's always great ideas out there is there something in particular that uh, attracts you to certain projects? I mean, is there the one thing or uh, just, yeah, one thing you can specify? Yeah, I think, I, 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 think, I think there's something about humanity and the universal, the universality of humanity and how, you know, it doesn't matter what your color is, your race or your religion, is that there are good things that happen and there are bad things that happen and what are those reasons for happening? Mm-hmm. But I think I, I, I go for those rather than, you know, a great cast done. Mm-mm. Although you can also do a great car stunt as well. Yeah. <laughs> the ca- car stunts, you know, you can always put those in just to, you know, just yeah. keep, keep people going. But you, 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 you know what, you can, but if you have something compelling as well and a really great story, I think then, you yeah. know, that's what good movies do. Of course, yeah. Those are the movies that sort of leave something with you and, you know, you, the movies that you can't quite shake, you know, leave you with a bit of a feeling. <clears throat> hey, you know, listen, I don't know if you saw Logan. I don't know if yeah. that's a big movie. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. Logan was a, you know, a big popcorn movie, but had a really great message. You know, Hugh Jackman was incredible in that film. Mm. Um, that's good entertainment. Yeah. Well, you want to, you know. A great acting, great wanna, story. Great. I love that film. Well, that's you, you are really good at plugging other people's movies. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I think that you should you should be you should you know it's not just about my movies it's no. an industry and and, and you know. Of course. Yeah. Well, I wanted to ask you about that because obviously there's lots and lots of, uh, as a fellow Brit, and there's lots of Brits in Hollywood, mm. uh, and uh, whether it be in the <laughs> a- acting or behind the scenes or whatever like yeah. that. What, what is it like going from being a you know an English guy in England to working in LA and being in the movies? Is that like a, kind of a stuff of dreams? Did you expect to be there? No, I did not. I really didn't. I mean, uh, I came here. I've been in LA 23 years. And when I first came here, I just wanted to work in the movie business. I, you know, and I thought that you know that was my first goal. And and you know, when you arrive here from another country, it is kind of all it's awe inspiring. You're like, mm-hmm. oh, hang on. And then you get into the American dream and the American ethic, and you realize that you can do anything that you want, and that you have no limits. Yeah. So. I started to realize, you know, in my mid-twenties that, well, maybe I could become a director. Maybe it's possible, you know, and I just pursued, I pursued that. And, and in America, you can, you can pursue it because it's radically individual here. Mm. And, and yeah, it is, it is kind, it's kind of amazing. Sometimes I think about it, I went, man, the, the situations I've been in and you can never take it for granted. Mm-hmm. No, that's yeah, that's amazing. So, so you, when you moved to LA, you you didn't have it. It wasn't even in your mind to be a director. You just moved there for the sake no, of it. No, no, no. I moved. I moved here. I just wanted my my goal was I just want to work in the movie business. Right. That was my goal. Mm-mm. And then once I got here, I discovered all the one you know all the wonderful different facets of the business. Um, I, I, it certainly wasn't something I pursued. But now, I mean, you know, four movies in and hundreds of music videos and TV and things like that. It's just, <laughs> you know, I know I'm lucky. I know that. Oh, well, I know that'll be very inspiring to a lot of our listeners uh, this morning. Uh, are you ever going to make a, a movie in Egypt? This is where you need to be. This is this is a beautiful country with beautiful scenery. This is a place to make a film, by the way, Elliot. I was planning on coming to Egypt in December, actually. There you go. I well, you need to, to look us up. I Sham and Alexandria and Cairo and... Exactly. Yeah, it's, a, it's such a it's such a rich culture. It's such mm-hmm. amazing people. Well, one thing you, know. you will you will discover when you come here is that everyone will want to take you home, introduce you to the family, <laughs> feed you to death. Fabulous. That's that's what what Egyptians do, and yeah. I can speak out of experience. Absolutely. <laughs> What's that? Why that you have that great song? Guys, there's a great Egyptian song about Habibi. Uh, Habibi and Nora Line. Oh, Habibi, uh, Habibi. Habibi. I I love yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that song. Oh, wow. Ahmed Yeb, the singer, will be so happy to hear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I know he did this amazing, I mean, he did this amazing music video. I think he's on the beach and he's in the city and stuff. No, I, I that's a, that, that's a, I'm really, I really like that song. And it's a famous song, isn't it? It's yeah. song massive. Played. Absolutely. Yeah, it's it's from like the mid 90s. It's a huge song. <laughs> <laughs> but isn't, isn't, isn't the Habibi song, um, isn't it also a tradition? Hasn't it been sung by many different people? 
Um, Habibi, uh, which means my love or my darling, and yeah. it, it, it's uh, it's one of those words that we use a lot <laughs> here yeah. in Egypt. We're going to find a lot of songs without it. <laughs> yeah, a lot of them. Uh, but yeah, definitely, it's a term of endearment. So if you ever come here, I'm sure you will be called Habibi yourself many times. <laughs> oh, wow. Do you hit us I up? Love that song. Do you hit us up if you come uh, in December? And and. Uh, why should people this weekend because uh, it's still on in cinemas uh, all this weekend the new film with Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, is called Aftermath directed by Elliot Lester uh, Elliot why should people go and see it this weekend because it's a it's a it's a, a it's a it's supporting a hero uh, of cinema and looking at him in a new light and he's getting older we're all getting older <laughs> he needs it <laughs> <laughs> oh he's <laughs> he needs, yeah, he needs the paging you know, because it's a different. It's also it's a true story. It's based on a true story, and you know some people I'm sure in Egypt are going through a bit of a hard time, and they want to understand, they want to make sense of some things, and it's a good way of trying to make sense of bad situations. Well, we've put the trailer onto our Facebook page and on Twitter now, so if you can go and have you. a you can go and have a look at that. And uh, Elliot Lester, it's been fantastic to speak to you. Lovely. Thank you so much for staying up in LA after a long shoot to talk to us. We really appreciate it. All right. Okay. Bye, Habibi. Bye, <laughs> bye, bye, bye Habibi. Bye, bye. <laughs> bye, bye. Take care. Bye, bye. Hi, I'm Calvin Harris, and this is my tongue right here on Nile FM.